going so well. And he was still alive when all of it started to happen, when my water broke. He was, like, he was active when my water broke. Um, so after that, we didn't even know if we could, um, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, decide to go through all of it again could, d with a pregnancy, um, if it would be too much. But, um, in November of 2014, I found out we're pregnant again. And you, you want to be excited, right? But after everything that you just experienced, how are you excited? It's so guarded. And everything was going all right again. The night of March 16th. Well, we went to bed on March 16th. Sometime during the night, I thought I had peed myself. I thought the, you know, like the baby had kicked in such a way, although they're so small at that point, like it just didn't make sense. But I woke up and my underwear were wet. And I went to the bathroom and there's still fluid leaking. I get to work and there's still fluid like leaking. I had sent him a message and said, I'm just gonna go to OB triage and just get checked just to verify that it's not what I think it is. He's like, okay, let me know if you need me. Because I didn't want him to take some time off just to sit there for a few hours for them to confirm. I just peed myself. So they do the test. My water had broke again. Andy came and met me. They gave us some options. I had not lost as much fluid this time as I had with Henry's pregnancy, so I decided, uh, we, not just me, we decided to go home and wait it out. Just spend the time together, just be, um, and just wait it out. Because the baby was still alive, the baby was still active and doing doing its thing. So this was early in the morning still, 10 a.m. maybe. We went home, I called my mom on the way. She actually came to visit us, I called Andy's parents, they came to visit us. They actually brought supper um, and that night I told Andy I think the baby has passed away now because I hadn't felt any movement for a little while he's like okay we'll go in tomorrow morning we get to um, OB triage and again they said I was already like two centimeters dilated Although I wasn't in active labor. So we get over to labor and delivery and get everything prepped and ready and go through all of the information, etc., etc., in our plan. Um, this time we did things a little bit differently. Um, however, they had already confirmed that the baby had already passed away. Uh, and so we're going through the whole process, and again they're saying now this is going to take a while because your body isn't ready and prepped to give, to deliver already, um, but they did remind me, and I think I forgot to say this with Henry's delivery, they did say it's going to be more painful. Um, 
So I'm going to backtrack just a little bit. With Henry's delivery, I figured part of the grieving process, like I would just go through the pain. And ultimately, I ended up getting an epidural because the pain was so difficult. I literally couldn't breathe, um, which was only making the whole situation worse with his delivery. So as I was getting the epidural, that's when everything happened for him. This time, before we started getting into um, helping the progress of the delivery, labor and delivery occur, um, I just decided to go straight in to an epidural for the pain, thinking this time it would help the grieving process and just the whole process in general. And again, things went a lot faster, but I did already have an epidural. Um, Mariah Elaine was delivered on March 17th at like 6.15ish p.m. And she looked like me. <laughs> and once again, all of our hopes and dreams, our plans and everything, and just crumbled, just crumbled. Um, and then there were some, some complications after the delivery. I, I don't even remember what time it was, but after trying several different methods, uh, and just being exhausted from pain and all the medications that I was getting into my body I finally went in for a DNC a fully knocked out DNC um, around midnight and I was scared after everything that I've been through at that point I was afraid I wasn't coming out of that surgery. After all of the medications I had received, I was afraid I wasn't coming out of that surgery. I couldn't keep my eyes open and I had only had an epidural and just the medications to try and get the placenta to detach. And I can tell you, Andy had that exact same feeling. He said he spent the entire time I was in there praying that everything would be okay. And it was. I remember waking up and he was the first thing that I saw because I was back in the room at that point. So, once again, we left the hospital without a baby. Mariah Elaine is very next to her brother, who is next to my grandparents. They have their own headstone that we picked out. And that whole process was just so difficult. So then the end of April 2016, found out we were pregnant again. This one was a surprise and a shock. But, um, that pregnancy did not come without its own complications, but in January 2017, we had our second daughter. I think we may have uncovered what some of the issues were, um, but we almost lost that pregnancy as well, but we didn't. One reason why I am I, I filmed this, why, why I challenged myself to share, is like I said, um, I've never put it all together before. I've never shared with any specific one person all of this comprehensively. And there's a lot more feelings and thoughts and things that happened I didn't put in this video, so it wasn't three hours long. <laughs> I want it to be a message of hope, uh, a message of perseverance, a message of faith and relying on God, um, 
Because in all honesty, between Andy and God and the fact that I already had a beautiful daughter who still needed me, that was all that got me through all of this. Absolutely all of it. So I want you to know that there's hope. I want you to know that you can persevere, that it's okay to cry, it's okay to feel the pain and the grief, but make sure that you have a support system. And if you don't, reach out to somebody. Even, even if they haven't reached out to you, reach out to them and say, hey, I need to talk. I just, I need, because I had that with Andy. And he needed it from me, I guarantee it. But, find your support system. And your church is always a great place to turn. And if you don't have your church, there's somebody who is willing to help. Don't be afraid to reach out to somebody. And I'll be praying for all of you who are watching this, who have gone through this, experienced it at some point, are in the process of going through it, wherever you are, I will be praying for all of you. And don't, don't take that lightly. And that's one way to help me with my grieving process, is to help, help you. So, I hope you got something out of this, and keep your eye out for something in the future. Some, we have some videos coming up and uh, one of them will talk about our marriage and the process there and this has a lot to do with it so see you around guys bye